All right, another quick video here. This is in response to a comment from Ted Matos, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name there, but he was asking about the Scatus uh, mounting hooks that I had made in a previous video, and I was shocked to find out that I actually didn't go into detail about making these things. I just went straight into making the different sort of holders and stuff like that for the Scatus board. So I have to revisit it, right? Yes, of course I do. And if you are interested in creating your own Scatus board accessories, you have to start with the mounting bracket. So this is how I made mine. I really tried to keep the mounting bracket simple. I was going to actually print these up separately and then glue them on to the different Scatus board accessories afterwards. So I ended up starting with a two centimeter by six and a half centimeter base plate. Now the Scatus mounting bracket involves two pieces that extend from this mounting plate and go into the Scatus board. One is the main hook that basically locks into the Scatus board. And then the second one is just merely just a post that sticks out. It basically prevents the mount from swinging around and helps lock it in place. So that's essentially what I'm starting with here first. Just a small piece. And basically it is 4.8 millimeters in diameter. That was the width that I found fit nicely into the slots of the Scatus board. So this is basically a cylinder that I have sized down to 4.8 millimeters along the x-axis and 4.8 along the y. I'm also adding a half sphere onto the top of the cylinder just to help eliminate any sharp edges that might get caught onto the board as I'm trying to insert this mount. And I'm also scaling down this half sphere to 4.8 millimeters in diameter, again, so it matches up nicely to that cylinder. And I want an overall height of about five millimeters here. So I do have to scale down the height of the cylinder to about 2.6 millimeters. Add on top of that the height of the half sphere, which clocks in at about 2.4 millimeters. And using the cruise tool, taking that half sphere and dragging it on top of this cylinder and then using the alignment tool making sure that it is lined up nicely to the cylinder along the x and y axis and it's done at least this part anyway next let's build the hook so looking at how i built this hook it started with a few pieces a box as well as a cylinder that i cut right down the middle so that i could use each half to round out the front and back of this post. Again, it had to be 4.8 millimeters wide, and I made it 10 millimeters high. Next comes in the cylinder, and again, I had to scale this down so that it was a diameter of 4.8 millimeters to match that of that box. And then I just increased the height of it to 10 millimeters, again, to match the box. Using a cutout, basically a box set as a whole that was half the diameter, 2.4 millimeters, aligning it to one edge of that cylinder, and then grouping it, I am left with a half cylinder. After that, I just simply duplicate it and rotate the duplicate 180 degrees. One half cylinder for each end. Now here, all I'm doing is just putting all of these pieces together, but I use the work plane tool to ensure that I'm placing these half cylinders flat up against this square rectangle or square box. Again, putting that work plane on the surface, selecting the half cylinder, and then pressing D to drop it on that work plane is fast, easy, love it. Repeat it on the other side by placing the work plane on the other side of this box and dropping the other cylinder onto that surface. After that, I just simply select all of these pieces and center it along the x-axis so they're all in line with each other. And this is the start of the post for the hook on my Scatus board mount. So right here, it was important for me to make sure that these two posts that would insert themselves into the Scatus board were separated by the appropriate length. Basically, from what I measured, it was three centimeters. So starting with the alignment tool, I just needed to make sure that they were in line with each other. And then after that, it's time to drop the ruler tool. Now, I'll include a link to the ruler tool at the end of this video. But essentially, if you've never used this before, it measures the selected objects to the origin of your ruler. Basically, where the X and Y axes meet. 
Because I know the diameter of that yellow post, it was some pretty easy math to figure out how far away I needed to place that red post from the origin in order to achieve a three centimeter gap. Now, initially looking at this ruler tool and seeing all the numbers and all the lines and all of that kind of stuff, it can look pretty intimidating. But it is so much easier once you get the hang of it to use the ruler tool rather than clicking out distances using your arrow keys. It's a much faster and a much more accurate way of placing objects. All right, so to complete the hook, I'm throwing down another cylinder, scaling it down again to 4.8 millimeters in diameter, and I'm flipping it so that it is lying on its side. The length of this hook is going to be 13 millimeters. Again, I'm just following and copying other designs here of these Gaddis hook mounts. So for this, the cylinder is going to be about 10.6 millimeters long, and then add on top of that in the length a half cylinder that will be. 2.4 millimeters, and there's your 13 millimeters. Now, using the alignment tool, it allows me to align this cylinder to the top edge of that red post, and you can see I'm starting to form the hook here. Now, to help smooth this out so it doesn't look like two distinct shapes, I actually drop the height of this red post down by 2.4 millimeters so that its height maxes out right where the widest part of the cylinder occurs and hopefully allows me to blend those two pieces together along that Z axis. Next, I want to round out that back end of that cylinder and make it more angled. Again, to help with the smooth insertion of this hook into the SCADIS board. So for this, I just make a duplicate of that red post, turn it into a hole, and then line it up with another box. After I align these items, I place and sink that hole into the solid box, group them, and then with this new shape, I convert that into my cutout by turning it into a hole. Next, I just align this cutout with my hook, and I'm going to tilt this cutout so it starts to shear off that back end. And I can adjust the tilt, I can move it closer again, positioning this just right so it takes off just the right amount and leaves me the look that I want. Honestly, I could have left it as is, but I just wanted to angle it off there so I didn't run the risk of catching that corner as it was being inserted into the hole of the SCADIS board. Similar to what I did with the other post, I just took another half sphere here, sized it down to 4.8 millimeters in diameter, placed it on its side, and then using the cruise tool, place it on the tip of that hook. The alignment tool again helped me ensure that this sphere was centered perfectly on that cylinder. And that was pretty much it. These two pieces were separated by the appropriate length, and it was just a matter of grouping them together and dragging them on to that mounting plate using, once again, the cruise tool. After that, I would just center it along the X and Y axis, and we are ready to print this thing. All right, here it is. Let's check it out. Fantastic. Looks good. So here's the thing. Once you've designed this and it works, there is nothing stopping you from going back and continuing to improve upon this design. Revisiting my design of this SCADIS board mount allowed me to actually try to improve upon it because one of the things I don't like about the SCADIS hook or the SCADIS mount is that it tends to lift off and out of the SCADIS board. So I tried to figure out a way to help lock in this mount. And one way I thought of was basically to add a ball or knuckle at the top of that second bottom peg with enough flex that would allow it to snap into the board and prevent it from just simply sliding out again. But if I ever wanted to, have enough flex that I could pop out that mount if I needed to. The redesigned SCADIS board mount hook, whatever you want to call it, let's see how it does. So this goes in like this. Ooh. Oh yeah, look at that, it catches just a bit, but enough that I can actually pop it out. I could probably just add even a little bit more there to make it even harder, but like this, I can snap it in 
there's that little bit of resistance there that prevents it from just wanting to come out, which is nice. So once you've created a way to mount stuff onto your board, you can just simply build around it, add stuff to it, modify it, create your own custom holders, whatever. You can even make it so it's a double hook so that you can actually have something there that is extra wide on your SCADIS board. The sky is the limit when it comes to design and it all starts with just being able to attach something to your SCADIS board. Anyway, I love the fact that we could revisit this and uh, I hope you found that helpful. And until next time, take care. We will see you later.